good evening and today we are looking at genetics. So what is genetics? Genetics is termed as a study to understand the functioning of inheritance of traits from parents to offspring. The, ground on, the groundwork on which heredity stands is known as inheritance. It is defined as a procedure by which characteristics are handed down from one generation to another. So if you go into genetics from the start, we need to look at genes. So genes are the building blocks for your body. Some genes give the instructions to make proteins. A protein's job is to tell your body what types of physical characteristics you should have, like your hair, your eye colour, and some genes code for ribonucleic acid, which does other jobs. So how do I get genes? You can't just buy genes from a department store unless you're buying other types of genes, the ones that you wear. You, in you inherit your genes from your parents. You receive one copy of a gene from each parent, one from the egg and one from the sperm. Once you receive a pair, your genes divide and copy themselves until your body has enough genes to fill you into the instruction manual. There are approximately 20,000, 25,000 genes in your body. How do we get our genes? People inherit their chromosomes which contain their genes from their parents. Chromosomes come in pairs and humans have 46 chromosomes and 23 pairs. Children randomly get one of each pair of chromosomes from their mother and one from their father. The chromosomes that form the 23rd pair are called the sex chromosomes. They decide if a person is born a male or female. So a female has two X chromosomes and a male has one X and one Y chromosome. Each daughter gets an X from her mother and an X from her father whereas each son gets an X from his mother and a Y from his father. So chromosomes are structures that look like thread which live in a nucleus or the centre of the cells. One molecule of DNA and one protein make up one chromosome. Chromosomes of different sizes and proteins called histones allow them to pick up small enough to fit in a nucleus. Without these, our chromosomes would be as tall as we are. Chromosomes give your cells the actual instructions to make you into a unique person. So human, as I said before, humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes, 46 total. Chromosomes divide into 22 numbered pairs known as autosomes and one pair of sets chromosomes, X and Y. You receive one chromosome from each parent to make a pair. Although rare errors occur when cells divide and replicate, so people might have an additional chromosome attached to a pair known as triosisomy or one less chromosome as pair known as monosomy. The relationship between functional DNA genes and chromosomes. DNA genes and chromosomes work together to make you who you are. Chromosomes carry DNA in cells. DNA is responsible for building and maintaining your human structure. Genes are segments of your DNA which give you physical characteristics that make you unique. Together, your body has a complete instruction manual that tells your cells how to behave. So you can end up with genetic disorders, and these can happen for many reasons. They are often described in terms of the chromosome that contains the gene that is changed in people who have the disorder. If the gene is on the first 22 pair of chromosomes, called the autosomes, the genetic disorder is called an autosomal condition. If it's on the X chromosome, it is known as an X-linked condition. Genetic disorders are also grouped by how they run in families. Disorders can be dominant or recessive depending on how they cause conditions and how they run in families. So dominant diseases can be caused by only one copy of a gene having a DNA mutation. If one parent has a disease, each child has a 50% chance of an inherited mutated gene. For recessive diseases, both copies of a gene must have a DNA mutation in order to get one of these diseases. If both parents have one copy of a mutated gene, each child has a 25% chance of having disease even though neither parent has it. In such cases, each parent is called a carrier of the disease. You can pass the disease on to the children but not have the disease themselves. There's also single gene disorder, so some genetic diseases are caused by a DNA mutation in one of a person's genes. For example, suppose part of a gene used as a sequence TAC. A mutation can change the sequence of TTC in some people. The change in sequence can change the way the gene works, for example, by changing the protein that is made. Mutations can be passed down to a child from his or her parents, or it can happen for the first time in a sperm or egg where a child will have a mutation but the parents will not. Single gene disorders can be autosomal or X. We have 23 pairs of chromosomes, but sometimes a person is born with a different number. Having an extra chromosome is called a trisomy, and missing a chromosome is called a monosomy. For example, people with Down syndrome have an extra copy of chromosome 21. This extra copy changes the body's and brain's normal development and causes intellectual and physical problems for the person. Some of the disorders are caused by having a different number of sex chromosomes. For example, people with Turner syndrome usually have only one sex chromosome and X. Women with Turner syndrome can have problems with growth and heart defects. Chromosomes are incomplete or shaped differently than usual. Missing a small part of a chromosome is called a deletion. A translocation is a part of one chromosome is moved to another chromosome. An inversion is when one part of a chromosome is flipped over. A complex disease is caused by both genetic changes and environmental factors. 
Complex diseases are also called multifactual. Most chronic diseases such as heart disease, cancer, and diabetes are complex conditions. For example, while some cases of cancer are associated with inherited genetic changes, for example, Lynch syndrome and hereditary breast cancer or ovarian cancer, the majority most likely are caused by changes in several genes acting together with its environmental experience. Parents can pass on traits or characteristics such as eye colour and blood type to their children through their genes. Some health conditions and diseases can be passed on genetically too. Sometimes one characteristic has diff many different forms. For example, blood type can be A, B, A, B, O, A, B or O. Changes for variations in the gene for that characteristic cause these different forms. Inheritance patterns include autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive, excellent dominant, excellent recessive, violent, co-dominant and mitochondrial. So autosomal dominant is where the gene for a trait or com condition is dominant and is on a net non-sex chromosome. For recessive, it's recessive and there's a non-sex chromosome. For the excellent dominant, it is dominant but on an X chromosome. For the excellent recessive, it is recessive but on the X chromosome. For, light, for Y link, the gene for the trait or condition is on the Y chromosome. And for total dominance, each alley on a gene pair carries equal weight and produces a combined physical characteristic, such as the AB blood group. Mitochondrial is where the gene or trait is in your mitochondrial DNA, which sits in the mitochondria, which is the powerhouse of your cells. So the most common interaction between alleles is a dominant recessive relationship. An allele of a gene is said to be dominant when it effectively overrules the other recessive allele. Eye colour and blood groups are both examples of dominant recessive gene relationships. For example, the allele for brown eyes, capital B, is dominant over the allele for blue, blue eyes, small b. So if you have one allele for brown eyes and one allele for blue eyes, your eyes will be brown. This is also the case if you have two alleles for brown eyes, two b's. However, if both alleles for recessive trait, in this case blue eyes, bb, you will inherit blue eyes. Let's talk about the blood groups. For blood groups, the alleles are A, B and O. The A allele is dominant over the O allele. So a person with 1A and 1O, well, AO has blood group A. Blood group A is said to have a dominant inheritance pattern over blood group O. If the mother has the alleles A and O, her blood group will be A because the allele is dominant. If the father has two O's, he has the blood group O. For each child that the couple has, each parent will pass on one of the two other alleles. This means that each one of their children has a 50% chance of having the blood group AO or blood group A and 50% chance of having the blood group O, o, o depending on which allele is inherited. You can see here in this diagram how that works for the mother's blood group and the A phenotype. So look at recessive conditions. If a person has changed one has one changed and one unchanged copy of a gene and they do not have that condition associated with that gene change, they're said to be a carrier of that condition, such as big Q, small Q, big B, small B, etc. The condition is said to have a recessive inheritance pattern. It is not expressed if there is a functioning copy of the gene present. If two peoples are carriers of the same recessive con genetic condition, there is a 25% 1 in 4 chance that they may pass from both the changed copy of the genes onto their child. As the child then does not have an unchanged fully functioning copy of the gene, they will develop the condition. There is also a 25% chance that each child the same parents may be unaffected and a 50% chance that they may be carriers of the condition. So how do we test for this? Genetic testing. So genetic testing is a type of medical test that identifies changes in genes, chromosomes or proteins. The results of a genetic test can confirm or rule out a suspected genetic condition or help determine a person's chance of developing or passing on a genetic disorder. More than 77,000 genetic tests are currently in use and others are being developed. So I mentioned previously about co-dominant genes, the AB. So not all genes are either dominant or recessive. Sometimes each alley on a gene pair carries each weight equal weight and will show up as a combined physical characteristic. For example, with blood groups, the A allele is strong as a B allele. The A and B are said to be co-dominant as an equally expressed to other. So someone with a copy of A and one copy of B has a blood group AB. The inheritance pattern of children from the parents with the blood groups B, O and A, O will be shown. So each one in their children has a 25% chance of having a blood group AB depending on which allele is inherited. So here you can see this. The mother's blood group and the father's group, blood group, etc. And what they end up with. So a cell that produces by copying its genetic information and then splitting in half forming the two individual cells. Occasionally an alteration occurs in this process causing a genetic change. When this happens, chemical messages sent to the cell may also change. This spontaneous genetic change can also cause issues in the way the person's body functions. 
Sperm and egg cells are known as gem cells. Every other body in the cell is called somatic, meaning related to the body. Related parents are more likely than unrelated parents to have children with health problems or genetic conditions. This is because the two parents share one or more common ancestors and so carry the same genetic material. If both partners carry the same inherited gene change, their children are more likely to have a genetic condition. Related couples are recommended to seek advice from a clinical genetic service if their families have still a genetic condition. If a family member has been diagnosed with a genetic condition or if you know that a genetic condition has runs in your family, it can be helpful to speak to a genetic counsellor. Genetic counsellors are health professionals qualified in both counselling and genetics. As well as providing emotional support, they can help you to understand a genetic condition and what it causes it, how it is inherited and what a diagnosis means for you and your family. Genetic counsellors are trained to provide information and support that is sensitive to your family circumstances, culture and beliefs. So looking at autosomal inheritance patterns, this is autosomal dominant. Autosomal dominant means that only one copy of the gene that does not work correctly is needed for someone to have the condition. If one parent has an autosomal dominant condition, they have one functional copy of the gene and one copy that does not work properly. If the other parent has two copies of the gene that work properly, there's a one in two chance of having a child who is unaffected. There's also one in two chance of having a child who is affected. Autosomal dominant conditions such as Huntington's disease affect males and females equally. So just a wee touch upon Huntington's disease, that results is because of a triplet expansion of the CAG nucleotide. Here's a wee diagram explaining about the autosomal dominant or how, what would happen, who would become affected and who would be, un be unaffected. So autosomal recessive means that a person needs to have two copies of a gene that do not work properly to have the condition. In this pattern, pa people working with one copy of the gene and one copy with only one working copy that does not function correctly are called carriers. Carriers do not have any signs or symptoms of the condition but they can still pass on the gene that does not function properly to their children. Usually, parents of children with an autosomal recessive condition are carriers. So, if both parents are carriers of condition, there's a 1 in 4 chance of having a child who has two working copies of the gene, 25% chance of having a child who is affected, and a 50% chance of having a child who is a carrier. So, autosomal recessive conditions include cystic fibrosis, which is a mutation in CTFR gene, transmembrane protein, which affects male and females equally. And here's the autosomal recessive inheritance patterns. So your sex chromosomes carry the genes that make you a male or female. A female has two X chromosomes. A male has one X chromosome and one Y chromosome. If a gene for a condition is carried on the sex chromosomes, we see it as X-linked. X-linked patterns are not as simple as autosomal patterns because they show up differently in males and females. X-linked dominant inheritance occurs when a gene that does not work correctly on a single X chromosome results in a condition. Conditions caused by X-linked dominance are rare and the same condition can vary considerably in severity, especially on women. The odds of passing on a condition that is X-linked dominant are different depending on whether the mother or father has a gene that does not function properly and on the sex of the child. If the father has a condition, he cannot pass on the gene that does not work correctly to his sons because it is on his X chromosome. Men pass only the Y chromosome to their sons. He will always have a 100% chance of passing on a gene that does not function properly to his daughters because he only has one X chromosome and he passes that X chromosome to all his daughters. Here's another wee diagram of X linked dominant affected father. Recessive means that there is only one working copy of the gene and a person will not have a condition. The gene for these conditions is on the X chromosome. X linked recessive conditions affect males more than females. If a male has a co copy of the gene that does not function the way it should be on his X, only on his X chromosome, they will be affected by the condition. Some forms of haemophilia are excellent recessive conditions. So here's this is affected excellent recessive if the affected father and how the children result. So most of our genes are stored in our chromosomes which sit in each cell's headquarters and nucleus. We also have some genes in small structures in the cell called mitochondria. Mitochondria are sometimes called the power plants of the cell. They work on molecules to make them ready to give us the energy we need for our body functions. The mitochondrial genes always pass from mother to child. Fathers get their mitochondrial genes from their mothers and do not pass them to their children. So mitochondrial inheritance, also called maternal inheritance, refers to genes in the mitochondria. Although these conditions affect both males and females, only mothers pass mitochondria onto their children. A father can never pass on a mitochondrial condition because he does not pass on his mitochondrial genes. If a mother is affected, her children will be affected, regardless of whether they are male or female, because she always passes her mitochondrial genes to her own children. Examples include diabetes mellitus and deafness follows mitochondrial inheritance patterns. Looking at how do I improve the health of my DNA? 
To improve the health of your DNA, take steps to take care of your body since your DNA is responsible for how you form and function. You can improve your overall health by eating a well-balanced diet, exercising, maintaining a healthy weight, avoiding smoking tobacco, using tobacco products. So that's the end of today's video. Hope you've enjoyed it and hopefully see you in the next one.